Talk one on one. That's how I come in, baby. We gon' have fun. Uh. We be on fire. We be lit, lit. Mm. It's a unique hustle. Big, big shit. Uh. Big shit. Big shit. Big uh. shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, like nigga. The, big uh. shit. <laughs> big shit. Big Music shit. Music connoisseur. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss uh. stop. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss uh. stop. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss I'm giving it to yeah, it. Everybody on it. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy E C E O. And I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not none, you know, my dad walk on. Man, hey man, look, man, this 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 guy right here, I've been trying to get an interview with him, man, ever since, man. I locked in with him. It's been it's been a, it's been a while. And I was like, man, I got to get this guy. <laughs> in order for the show to go on, you know, they say the show must go on. We had to go on at the at the time we did it. Yes, sir. But we got him now, man. Dr. Rose is in the building. Mm. It's a great time to have me, man. <laughs> literally. <laughs> no, I'm serious, man, literally. I'm just like, can you say, it's a pleasure to be on here. I'm very humbled to actually be on here to be, know that this mic has graced a lot of Whoa. nice voices and uh, those who truly speak from when they Heart, yeah, you know, so it's great to be on here, man. Thank you, man. Thank you so much, man. Like you, one of those guys, man. When I think about the city and I think about mm -hmm. entrepreneurship, <laughs> man, and just the the you know, there's a a bar being set. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and and it's it's very very high expectations on the bar that's being set when a man start to look at your caliber, mm -hmm. what you bring to the table. Um, we've watched. Uh, a lot of different feedback on you, but just the stuff that you do in the community sticks out for me. But I know how Miss Jamaica is. I'm gonna pull yes. up because she got some things she want to try to well, loop in there on me. Let's and, get it. <laughs> See, I'm the type of person. I like to know you as a person, mm -hmm. not just what you've done now, but the reason why you did what you did now. So I need to know how you were raised, where you were raised. I think you're from Oak Cliff. I am from Oak Cliff. Okay. You know, uh, Dallas, Texas, Oak Cliff, man. With the, all the Oak Cliff schools, man. With the homes. Uh, went to Flanker and Delano, Rosen, uh, Delano Roosevelt and it was just one of the things where I said I feel like when you're from the hood like everyone has a story right so it, it becomes a race of whose story is going to get them out first you know and then you start thinking like man shit we all alike shit mm -hmm. so maybe we think alike which means oh shit it's really crowds in the bucket right now shit because yeah. <laughs> we're not really helping each other and then you start growing out of it and start saying like which way is you know, you just feel like you really just following and you knowing that when God, when you turn back, you know, like, nah, God was leading you. You know, he was leading you in an area of astray to be by yourself. But you're talking like this now, but as a kid growing up, you weren't thinking Shit. like that. Let me tell you something. She just, uh, my, uh, my, uh, my manager just met one of my uh, teachers today. Mm -hmm. She literally told you I talk like this in school. Really? Because I realized, I used to say, man, I used to, when I was younger, it's like, damn, God, why you give me this body? I swear to God, you say shit like that, because I'm under. I'm looking at myself outside myself. Like I'm looking at myself through my eyes. You hated your size. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, because I knew, like, damn, this is a vessel I must operate in now. Right. You know, I must literally learn a lot of things early. And we was talking the other day, like, man, how you know? Like, I knew what I, I knew I would, I wasn't good at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. because of research is so that my stature will only say this is your limitations, this is your peak, this is your limitation, this dude, man. And it's you believe in researchers. Okay. Yeah, people, yeah. So you tell me people cannot defy what research has shown? Can people not defy uh that's how you do it. That's how growth happens. You gotta learn what someone failed at. And I say the best teacher is, yeah, pain. Learning mm -hmm. from, but the best he's just saying, you know, yeah, I'm gonna learn from your pain. Yeah, but I gotta say this, man. Like when you come from Oak Cliff, you know, uh, Oak Cliff has a stigma where you had to be tough. You know what I'm saying? Was it times when you ran in a situation I, I, where you had to be tough, being I, small? I feel like you are your environment. Okay. So when you when you are your environment, you lash out, you do everything at our at our to say, you know, this is this is me to try to protect myself. You know, this is me trying to protect me. This is me trying to protect where I'm going. So you do have to defend yourself. So it's like, shit, you're right. I'm pretty sure everyone in there with a low budget, low resources, low food, low economic status is saying, hey, yeah, man, we all trying to make it. You're going to think that, hey, it's got to be one of us to make it. But shit, I'd rather be me. 
Oh, but when but when people talk about Oak Cliff, you know, because coming here from Jamaica, when I heard of Oak Cliff, everybody made it seem like it was a ghetto, like everybody was poor, such and such. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. It's, it's different sides of but, Oak Cliff, but though. But when he drive me through certain parts, I'm like, okay, is this still Oak Cliff? And he's like, yeah, I'm, like, I'm looking up at these houses. I'm like. <laughs> no. So Oak Cliff is so many sides of Oak Cliff, right? Right. And I can't even tell you because I've lived in so many different parts of Oak Cliff to know, like, man, this shit is big. So it, any area, you can get it if you're not knowing where you at. You know what I mean? So it, it's best to operate in your best lane, and that's your lane. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? And that's what's going to give you the comfort zone to escape these things that goes on, man. It's so, like, man, listen, the stories you see. Man, you ain't like, got to tell me. Like, the, the uh, uh, big T, see, big, big T, big T is in Oak Cliff, y'all, just in case y'all didn't know. <laughs> big T Bazaar, man. And I'm going to tell you, man, uh, the things I see that my guys send me from over there that's going on. When I first started this yeah. spot, uh -huh. they were like, man, I was going over there every, I didn't know why God had me going over to this Big T Bazaar every weekend. I was single at the time. This was before I met my <laughs> yeah, wife. I was single at the time. I was single. <laughs> <laughs> it was you know, 20 years. Back, back. This is a long ways back. <laughs> and I was going to that Big T Plaza on Sunday Glendale and all that stuff y'all do over there I got caught up in y'all sauce nigga yeah <laughs> <laughs> no cause he can easy, you can easily fall into it because it's it's a lifestyle it was true culture where you can go to Rochester yeah, yeah you know what I mean yeah, like yeah. you can go to the park on a Sunday and, and, hang and, and hang out with the old schools and the, the, the young ones coming up and just out there shooting shit where it's like shit the old school people will treat you like they age mm -hmm. like shit I was getting lashed and like it wasn't no easy like mm -hmm. nah nigga you out here with us but, but you learn a lot. But though. you learn a lot. You learn, you a, learn lot. a lot. But Dr. Rose, man, to see where, you, I, like, I just was over there yesterday at your at your new place, uh, and, and to see you there, and to see, you know, to hear you talk about Rochester, and to hear mm. you talk about Glendale, and to see where you at now, you know, it makes me think about David in the Bible, mm -hmm. where you start off this little Rudy boy, mm -hmm. but then you turn to this, this giant killer. Mm -hmm. Man, be real, I oh, always, I always, I always, nigga, I, I gotta get the book for myself for this show. No, and the thing about it, though, <laughs> when you already know you possess it inside you, yeah. you know when to turn into it. You oh, know what I mean? I got you. So you, it ain't That's never, good. I've always suppressed it. You got to think about it when people are like, oh, you move with this. Like, nah, I know when and when not to. That is mm -hmm. true control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I know when to suppress it and to let it out. And that's why I love music. Yeah. I control it. I control the way that I spaz out. I control the way I let my emotions out and know that, hey, if people gravitate towards it, they do it. They don't. Hey, it's, it's my lane because I'm only going to attract the energy that's for me. So as a kid, right, I've always loved science. Okay. But I've also loved, like, Man, listen, I love I love being outside okay. because I didn't grow with that structure. I ain't because you know when I always I used to growing up when I used to do my motivation speak. I used to always talk about yeah, I come from crackhead descendants. But then you realize like when your mama heard that shit, mm -hmm. you put them back in that trauma. So you got to stop talking in ways of where it still put people that cause the trauma to uh, their demons to pop back up every time you want to go motivation speak about your pain. You know, so but it's I, your truth, though. How can you not talk but, about your truth? But it's my truth, but I don't have to sell it. You know, because I don't have to live there. I don't. If you're interested in me, yeah, my truth is yes, I'm from that, and I overcame it. But some people get caught in their truth by reliving it. Mm -hmm. By every time we get on these things, and we program to always be in there, and that's when I was. Uh, I had to step away after getting shot. We talk about some of the yeah. things too. Is later on, whereas like you know, you can't keep reliving it, but your environment makes you keep reliving it, and your environment wants to start in your head. So, your head now is manifesting everything in real life. I never thought about yeah. that before. Yeah. Whereas you said your environment starts in your head. I always believe that your thoughts every, before you act out, you think about it first. Mm -hmm. Everything starts in a thought first. But whereas environment is concerned, because some people are raised in a certain environment, and if you are doing wrong. And you're trying to turn your life around it, like you know, I have to get out of this area you know, and move is, into another. Some people area. don't even know they're doing wrong. But, but that's the environment. It's like some people really don't know that they really have a true spirit of demonism. Like some people really, and that's the crazy thing about life. I mean, that's when you have to literally say, no, that's all is gone. That vessel is gone. But one thing I wanted to get back to is, um, you were raised with your mom and dad. I was raised. It was fluid, right? It was situations where, um, where. I talk about it, you know, no problem. Where we was, I uh, grew up in a trap house, basically. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But uh, my parents were, my mom was always in jail. Um, and my cousins was, my OGs basically over me. So my environment was, this was normal. And I didn't know it was normal to friends. She used to come up like, bro, your house stink. 
And we laugh about it now. <laughs> but the first thing I say was like, damn, nigga, I thought that was normal. Normal. So that's why you become desensitized to a lot of things. And through my whole journey, I had to literally learn how to not become like desensitized. I had to know that oh, that's not your normal. That is not normal. But I learned that by going through school, knowing, well, okay, this is a ceiling in a floor now. This is your new ceiling in the floor. You're nowhere like these people, man. But when you say your house stink, was it the weed or no, was, was it the cocaine? It's crack, man. It you know was what Primo smell like? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So you so, they would smell that smell um cuz it's different when it's smoking or when you yeah. just smell it. Cooking and all that. Yeah, it got different yeah, forms like it's different you know, forms. chemistry. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> like serious man, you like literally like you can literally at tip of like time man, if y'all really know how how all these words literally connect. And it do those who know what a business is and those who just know what they have to work for money is. In, in that environment, okay, because you said that you were living in an environment and the smell was there, and since you know chemistry now, um, living in there for, does, did that affect you? Like, because chemicals, people over a long period of time smelling and in, inhaling thing, a certain type of chemical. It made me hungry. And what I mean by hungry is like, you know what? I see or what a lot of perceived success is, but they telling me go to school. So it can't be about money. You know what I mean? Because I was seeing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wasn't involved with it because it's like, shit, they telling me go to school, so I'm listening. You know, so obviously it's not, you know what I mean? But I'm knowing, like, this shit ain't right, nigga, shit. I see this shit, nigga. I'm living in drug busts, living shit like a kid going home, coming home from school and knowing that I mean, your whole screen door and flow is on the fucking front yard. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because they took that whole, but you know how it is. Yeah, I've been there. They don't just, nah, they can't find out they taking a the whole door off. Every day. You let them know, like, hey, yeah, yeah, we finna turn some shit up. Yeah. And it was a chance to put us there, but like, oh, they ain't find out, but we finna fuck up the house and make them clean it up. Man, mm. I, I like I, I I like the fact of who you are now from where you came from. I love this road, man, because you say I change. You know, when you 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 hit a, you, it was like you went to school and that changed you. But I went to a place where when in the word it mm. says that uh, if any man be in Christ, he a, a new, new creature. creature. Yes, Old sir. things are passed away. Mm -hmm. Behold, all things become new. So when I was in the streets and I and and I hit my brick wall, mm -hmm. I was able to understand through reading the little Geneva Bible and it helped me to understand who I was. I had to reevaluate and know that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. But I had to hit that rock in order to know that. In order for me to know that, I had to go through all these different obstacles. But when I hit that rock, I was able to read and understand that I could start all over again. And we live in an age and people ask, what, who is God? Yeah. When you hear it, because you know why? People don't understand metaphors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And but we can talk about, oh, we got the best. You don't understand metaphors then. <laughs> you don't, because I can literally say, you said God saved you. Well, I can say science saved me. Correct. But I'm the reason that I science is the reason why I found God because I knew it was something higher than this. There you when go. It was new. I just had to. But science gave every proven fact to what you just talked about. Mm -hmm. You know, it really said, all right, science and Christianity, they're the same thing. Where did all this life come from? Cells. All right, you said all lights come through uh, imaginary thing, Mary, you know, the mitochondria. Like the powerhouse for the cell is found in a, um, a woman, right? The mitochondria. And that's when you get your mother's DNA. So that is something that's going to always be passed down is your mother's DNA no matter what. Because right. it's from the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. So what's the name? Mary had a little, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. <laughs> so it, it, it matches. So when, when, I was, <laughs> when I was talking earlier, with my science teacher, I literally told you, you save me. Because you jogged my mind. Mm -hmm. You know, you jogged my mind. All my science teacher jogged my mind. And I kept asking, like, dude, it got to be a way out this shit. Because I was living in shit. But I've always kept a positive attitude about right. it. Because I knew that like, it was ways out. Manifested. Because yeah. I never let my environment in my head dictate my environment that I was living in. Mm -hmm. And that's so crazy because one thing I've always asked everybody who sit in that seat, I always find out about how they were raised and so forth because being a mother and having kids, you want to know what to do, what not to do because I've seen people who say that they come from a good household, wasn't in the hood, didn't need for anything, all of that, but ended up on the streets selling drugs, doing this, doing that. And as a parent, you always wonder how can you not have your children end up, you know, in jail, on the streets. You, you know what's so crazy, right? And this is like a whole system of everything, right? When you silence a woman, but they say the wells of a woman cry alerts 
everyone to pay attention. But when you silence a woman, no one listen to her. But or when you masculinize a woman, right? Now, but there's just another thing. So how do we get people pay attention? We say, guess what? Also, why we wanna the wells of a woman cry? Because we can see pain in a woman's eyes. Mm -hmm. Because it's re it's, re it's reflecting the pain that we're seeing. So because we all have this embedded mirror neurons about mimicry, we all want a natural mimicry to advance. Survival of the fittest, but you got to know how to mimic to say, hey, I may look like it, but I may not, but I'm trying to fit in to get ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, leeches. Man. So, mm -hmm. so it's like shit. So it all makes sense. But when they desensitize us to everything and let's say this is your new norm, but your new norm is like, shit, I thought that was normal already. Because the new norm is, oh, you're going to get out of it, but this is your suburbs but like shit now they pushing us out because they coming back in I want to ask you about him going to school and, and, and having to change from coming up in that environment and then going into this new environment just how was it transitioning you know they, you know, and, and, also, and also, did any children feel like, oh, you acting like you're better than us just because nah. you when have you a, changed over, yeah. like, because you did go somewhere where it was better environment, right? Nah, or so, did you go to school nah, and nah, go nah, back nah, home? Nah, shit, nah, hell no, nah. <laughs> hell no, nah, shit, no. Nah. I was kicking it. Like, I don't act like I'm the best student. I don't act like nah, I was goofy as hell, and I played a lot in school. Mm. But teachers said, man, you are smart, so they gave me leeway because I showed potential. God always working potential. He's gonna give you manna, not bread, mm -hmm. all right? So when you realize that you work in an area of potential, which means that, hey, if I work, people will invest, which means I see some in you. You know how it feels good to say somebody, I see some in you. It makes you feel, hmm, whatever I'm doing, I'm doing it right, mm -hmm. you know? But when they turn your back on it, when it's truly, when they stop talking to you, it's literally like, oh shit, you gave up on me for real. Damn. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you, that's a cold shoulder. So. Like I said, I was I was very in tune with emotions early to know that when I used to get picked, a lot of kids used to get sad because it was like, man, this nigga girl always doing this and this, but like, and he always the first. And I was like, oh, shit, that's ego. As a kid, so I, I learned the power of we early. I literally learned the power of we earlier. Mm. To you get know, them on your side because if you say, I, 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 it's going to make them hate you exactly. even more. So, and that's, that's when you- That's good stuff. Like literally when you learn the power of we become manipulation too. Exactly. So and that's when you say, All right, motherfucker, God, I'm stop God like I'm gonna stop giving you everything now because your we turned in manipulation. You trying to bless everybody <laughs> and everybody here for you, nigga. So mm. I'm to drain you now. Mm. How did he drain you? Energy. Because that's how that's how you're given the power to do what you want to do. Energy. You need the creator to destroy, it's only transferred. But where do you get it? You gotta get up and wanna do it. You gotta go to sleep. You gotta wake up. You gotta see joy truly coming in the morning to get you there to know that life is a game of chess and poker face. Let me ask you about, when I came to your office yesterday, mm -hmm. it was like an office I'd never been to. <laughs> Let me be real with you. Y'all was in there having a good time. Usually when I go in that thing, I'm really like nervous as hell. <laughs> uh, I'm sitting there yeah, waiting my hates. turn. I don't like none of the mess y'all got going mm -hmm. on, but I'm gonna be rocking with you. You, you gonna fix me up. <laughs> I already done figured that out. Yes, sir. I, I know. I, I, I already told my wife, mm -hmm. like, I'm going to rock with him. He's going to fix me up. But at the end of the day, I got there, man, and, and just the way you carried yourself, man, thank you. No problem. Because it made me feel like I belonged. You know I, what I mean? Thank you. I so thank that's, you. That's, a, that's a dope thing. But how did you come up with that to get away from the traditional ways that offices are being ran? Because I know you've seen them. You know, and this is how you can go, like, you can mix both, right? Because, you know, they always say you can't work as a family because it crosses lines. But that's when you have to find God, mm. you know, in order to get that structure that you will find in a Fortune 500 company mm -hmm. because they operate off principles. You know, we operate off love. Sometimes love don't have principles. You know what I mean? Because we love our people, so we want to bring them up with us. So now you got to find God in order to operate with principles in love. You know, to know that, hey, these are the boundaries that set in front of me. To know that, hey, everything has a consequence. Everything. And with family, it can go thin. Like, it can go, like, literally blurred. Because, you know, you can let yourself and be yourself with your family. But sometimes you can't show that in this world over her. You know? And it's dangerous because, you know, they may take this. They play poker all the time. Mm -hmm. They'll watch you get riled up, and that aggression that works over here with family, that scare tactic shit, it don't work over here with them. Mm -hmm. 
because they got them people on their side and they got contracts and they got to say, hey, I'm coming out to you if you do something to me. Mm-hmm. I'm going home good. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to charge you what I charge you. Mm-hmm. You know, where we operate in a thin line of like love, hate, but we go both ways because it's so emotion based. That's but, the one thing I'm scared of because like when you treat everybody you work with as family and stuff, sometimes people can, you know, not look at you as the boss anymore. They're mm-hmm. looking at you like, oh, I'll come in late. I'll do this. I'll do that. It's like, it, it, but that's when they start respecting your leadership. You know, yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm not the boss. I'm your leader. Mm-hmm. You know, which means I have the bosses provide pay. I provide abundance. Okay. You know, I provide a lifestyle to say, hey, this is healthy over here. This is good. If you want to stay in this area, this is going to always be here because teeth, you manifest light through teeth, through smiling. Yeah. Speak more into light every day. Smile. That's what smile stands for. Mm. So it must start with a smile, right? So I'm letting people know, like, over here is good over here. You know, we know how to learn. We got to have discernment. But, you know, we good over here. Wow. And that's why I can always say, you know, my lane is good. Man, I, like that. I just, oh, go ahead. Um, one thing I hear you speak a lot about is um, God, but you also speak about science, science, mm-hmm. right? And I know that a lot of people who deal with like Scientologists and stuff mm-hmm. like that, they don't believe in God. They believe that everything can be explained. So like miracles and stuff like that, they do not believe in at all. They think about, okay, no, there's a reason that it happened and I'm going to search to figure out why that happened. Do you believe that anything happened that cannot be explained? Uh, a lot of things happen. I mean, it, it depends on your mind though, right? So I can see where they're like, oh, I can't explain, but they, I don't, they haven't been to a place of so much weakness so you don't do nothing but call on God because your science can't get you out of this. It can't. Like you can literally say, because that's the case, why do we have mental illnesses, right? Because there are deterrents in your genotype and your phenotype. Right, your phenotype is uh, what you see. Your genotype is what no one sees, right? Right. So you can get your face and teeth done all the way, but it's still gonna present in your genotype, right? It's still mm-hmm. gonna be in your genes, mm-hmm. no matter how much you change your field school, all right? So you can't outrun your genes, right? Is that chemical imbalance is what causes? Yeah, so the chemical imbalance is so the dopamines and all that that gives you these addictions and rush and the nucleus occupants. Mm-hmm. So it becomes a, a thing of like, yeah, you can try to explain it through dope and all that shit and all the neurotransmitters but you can't because when people God don't work in you only he work in people mm-hmm. so you describing one person that had a cascade of events to other people right that's right <laughs> so no one alerted that this person is going to be right here at this very moment to save you and he just so happened to CPR classes yesterday right no, it's not coincidence. And this God said he had to go through it, this uh, class that he probably want to be exactly. in to be right here to guide you when you fell. Wow. And you thought you was about to die. But I said, hold on, motherfucker. Miracles ain't for me because I know I'm real. It's for other dudes who don't believe that I'm real. I got to mm-hmm. ask you about, um, we got to go back a uh, year and some ago to when you got shot. Um, we got to talk about it in a way to where I got to understand what were you thinking when it happened and just like, Having to deal with that, uh, did you know that this could happen? Did you even fathom it? Man, let me tell you something. You know that something told me some uh, syndrome? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I learned to walk by that a lot. Yeah. Because that some told me, some told me that it was really real, it was really real, and some told me it was really real. So you saw the signs, but you just wasn't aware? No, I saw both signs. To uh, <laughs> how to save yourself, because I brought you here, but you got to go through it because you didn't stop when I told you to stop. Mm-hmm. You know, and that was and that was the hardest thing that I had to admit before I uh, walked outside. You know, when I'm talking about like stop, I mean like, nah, not stop doing bad shit. No, God places things in your life to say, hey, I'm trying to give you a way to guide your life in a healthier way, mm-hmm. right? And everyone's saying, I am a sinner. I tell everyone, I'm a sinner. Hey, y'all saying I ain't perfect, but I know how to speak in uh, trials and tribulations to overcome. That's what I do. I speak in perspective. So, you know, and he was talking about, you know, knowing how to use we, you know, to get to what you wanted in life, you know. And when I say we, W-E, and knowing that, hey, you know, you can sacrifice the ego, but if you're not sacrificing ego for God, you sacrifice the ego for personal gains now, mm-hmm. which make you more of a cause because you just wanting to get money. But it wasn't even about money. It was about me knowing that I truly fuck with people so much that, 
God had to take me to bad souls to know that you cannot fuck with everybody, boy. Man, you're on another level. It was <laughs> so close you. to like the Mo Three shooting. Then you got shot. Yeah. How, did you even know that he had been shot? Yeah, you know it. Is, shit, it's Dallas, man. That's what I'm saying. Like, so nah, I'm not you even knew. gonna lie. I, I knew he was shot. Like it's Dallas. Um, he was shot like in uh, some somewhere in my old neighborhood. Okay. How close? How close was it? Like, like the next day. Like oh, literally, yeah, he day. was right. It was that's and why we I all was shocked. Like, damn, that shit happened. Mo three, and everyone was shocked in my office because uh, that's why I was like, where would you, where you at when it happened? I was in my office. Literally, it's just start the morning up. Shit, just you know, just uh, cutting on the office, uh, cutting on machines. Seen the first patient, and she's like, Did they just shot, it? yeah, they just shot Mo three on uh, what's thirty five? Like, yeah, thirty five. Like, damn, for real. And the crazy part, I never met him. Never but met. I, I met people. I met people who would come through him, you know, okay. people that knew him. Like, you know, this Dallas, everyone yeah, knows everybody. Yeah, everybody know each other. So, you know, so I never met him. Never met him? Never met him. And so walk me up to the point of where you get shot the next day. I got shot, um, what is it, the next day. What it's time crazy. was it? It was at night. At I was night. Le- like, it wasn't even like a bad night, too. It was like I was, but they hold that tip like, man, I was just trying to get out of my office because I felt something. Okay. You know, when you feel something, it's like, ah, oh, shit. And people are like, oh man, what you mean? Un- uh, I say everyone's a sinner, so the unholy lifestyle can be any goddamn thing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it can be like any goddamn country. We all had them thoughts of sin, but this time I was, uh, well, I was, I would say I was going in a lot of demon filled and devil places because I was just, I was, I wanted to have fun. Did you, you know? feel like you was gonna be okay after you got shot? Yeah, I knew it, knew it, like knew it. Where did you get shot at? My back. You, yeah, I seen mm. it on that album cover. You had that on that last yeah. album cover. I got shot in my back, right? And I said, and I told somebody the other day, I said, I didn't know how much pain I was in until I saw the pain on my mother's face. Wow, mm-hmm. that's heavy. Because mirror neurons, that's we're a reflection like mm-hmm. of what we are. And we're in, if you don't see it sometimes, it's when you're lost and you're going, you're like looking, you're clueless. Your mom going to always see it. Why? Because the science part behind it, the mitochondria. Shows like this is my seed. So what did she? So, what, what did you see in her? No, no I saw pain. You yeah, see, you see pain. You know, the, the hospital. No, no. The pain is no parent wants to die before they kid. Right. Exactly. <laughs> no mom wants to bury their child. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's why they say the wells of a woman cry because when that really happens, that really is pain. Now what you was about? But that? um, when you got shot, you didn't see the person who shot you because oh, it was he, in the back. No, nah, it wasn't even. It was. Uh, <laughs> so it, it was one of the things where. You're like walking I, out. I, I walk out. I say, I ain't even tell the story because y'all getting an exclusive right here. Because, <laughs> no, no, serious. Like, this is an ongoing, like, investigation. Oh, really? Like, hell, it's not even they like, hell. haven't found the person yet? <laughs> not even not found the person. This is about the way God works, man. Like, the way God works. Wow. And when I tell you that, just know, it was one of the things where I could, tell, I could say this because it was a journey, that uh, I believe that he ended up at the same hospital with me, too. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. It's crazy. That's so you crazy. so you said you walked out, you didn't see you didn't see the person, you saw the person and you started running off. That's how he shot I said you. I in the went back? by myself. You wasn't by yourself. No, I got a gun on me. Okay. Wow. But when you walked out Because um and I say this is fluid, like nah, it, it was really because protection was uh you always say, How do you know? You before it happened, a patient came to me like, Man, son, I something don't feel right. I just feel like you uh you're gonna get shot leaving this office. No. What? Yeah. <laughs> and the lady, and it's, it's so close to life hold that on, I don't even on, say this. On, <laughs> what time did they tell you that? Was that like early that no, day or like was, right was, before no, you walked out? And this is why, no, not before I walked out, but this is one of the things I can tell you this. This is why I solely believe in uh, messengers. It's messengers, and spiritual it's gods. Right. Yeah. Like in, in your body, would start walking in a way to prepare. And that's when they be talking about, man, he was spoke his death. Now he felt it. And he was just preparing. Ugh. You know, when people like me, he was talking about death so much, not just I'm talking like a lot of artists, yeah. or a, lot of people, a lot of people, Tupac, a lot of big time, like uh, motivation speakers mm-hmm. that know that's very in tune. They know that their inspiration is coming because they have done that purpose. But then at the same wow. time, I was talking about that yesterday, I think. And I was saying, you know, yes, it can be that. But then some people speak it into existence. Sometimes you can say something so much that it becomes your reality. No, it don't, it's those who don't understand the power of the tongue, you know. But when you truly understand that um, that when you sacrifice your your flesh and give it to God, mm-hmm. 
-hmm. right? This the true mean of spiritual growth of saying, hey, right. this flesh is not of me. I sacrifice because the devil ultimate goal is to trap me. And the ultimate trap is death. Mm -hmm. So the ultimate chess move is say, hey, God, I surrender my soul to you. I'm not killing the flesh knowing that, hey, I, my thoughts are your thoughts now. But the ultimate um, for him is death. But for uh, a believer is that I'm not going to to the Lord, you know, so that's my salvation. It's not like exactly. um, you know so what I mean. And then you start working on building the abundance that He's gonna prepare for you, heaven on earth. Right. Mm. You know, and that's when you sit back and start truly listening and waiting. He's not gonna come when you want him, but that's where he's right on time. Look right? out, now he's God preaching damn it, now. man. <laughs> <laughs> Shit is they talk about it, man. They say uh, when Jesus in the neighborhood, you better sit yeah. firm, motherfucker. Because <laughs> shit, he might knock on your damn door. And guess what? I'm waiting. Man. Waiting patiently. But guess what? They they took that out and said, Santa is coming on your door. Man. Well, God damn it. Well, if it's Santa or Jesus, you believe in Santa. I believe Jesus is coming with his blessing. Because mm -hmm. shit, Santa is imaginary. Well, God damn it, it sounds like Jesus, right? Right, it sounds like God. Well, guess what? I choose to believe in something that is not there. Let me ask you and this. I got to ask you this. Um, like, when you, how long was it before you could get back to work after you had got oh, shot? Oh, shit. It wasn't one of the things that. the next day. Now, hell no, nah, man. Listen, <laughs> let me tell you something. Listen. You're, you're a doctor, so I'm feeling like you're a dentist, but you know doctors. No, I, I, no, no. no, 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 no it, a nurse. You know what you're talking Yeah, and I know myself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I took my time, man. <laughs> Listen, man. No, let me tell you something. Your environment creates your reality. You can manifest grace and your anxiety away to some other shit, too. So it's, a, it's like I can't be around people while I'm rebuilding what I am, what I once thought I was me. You know, so it's like, nah, I got to really get by myself. You know, and then you really start just paying attention to a lot of things. And you start realizing, like, shit, if this didn't phase you, you're going to get you another thing to phase you. Because, you know, I, I did shake it off. Not in a bad way. I like, But it's like, if you know me, my favorite saying is, you can be all right. <laughs> shit, ask them. <laughs> Anything. If they, if I, if they say, Yo, nah, I got to teach you something, you're going to be all right. Bef way before I just was hate being religion. Mm -hmm. Like she might, man. He's I used to. There's a guy I used to work with that I used to hate when he said that. When you're a kid, and no matter you know, you come into somebody with your woes and you want advice or you want them to feel sorry for you or whatever. That oh, you can be all right. I'm like, <laughs> nah. That person truly believe you're gonna be all right. Right, but you didn't understand that before. <laughs> it annoyed you before, but as you got older, well, as I got older, I realized. And, and another thing, I'll, I'll just interject into that. When you say you're going to be all right, before that, I feel like a person that talks about their issues a lot of times was worshiping yeah, worry. always say that. And this is what we talked about. I yeah. can't keep reading. I, no, no. You just worship worry, and that's why you keep talking about it, so you're creating it in your life. And what we talked about early when I say I can't keep mm -hmm. on talking about my mom. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to create, uh, keep creating it. Then what are you going to talk about when you go on this podcast? Like, serious, she's just been listening to me. I respect my elders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I listen. It's like, as you keep saying it, it means you don't want to. You're not ready to walk in it, which means I can't force you. I can't force you to make a move. No, yeah. God is the only one who leads her yeah, path. Exactly. So it's like, right. you got to do that when you want to. So it's like, I'm going to let you have your side of your perspective. Man, I got to ask you about right. this. I got, you know, I got more. Uh, uh, when Sean Cotton, he he was on this show. Uh huh. And my guy is my brother. Man. He spoke about you in a in a way. At this time, he was having issues, and it was a Charleston White thing. Uh -huh. it, but he brought your name into it. Mm -hmm. He said you had issues with whatever the case may be. But he had this thing where he spoke about y'all's friendship, and that it was sacrificed in a way because he felt like from what he was doing in his life, it made a schism between you two. You know, like y'all wasn't talking for a period of time. No. I'm going to tell you some real shit. I pray for Sean. Okay. Because I know what he's doing. Okay. He has to, he has to put himself in harm's way. Okay. To go report news on, uh, you know, rap, rap mm -hmm. culture. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's like, literally, he's in D.C. Like yeah, I follow yeah, his journey. That. Like, nah, nah, I, I follow that. his journey. Me too. I pray for his steps. I'm like, man, hey, man, me listen, too. you out there posting. I'm literally like, that. don't be posting in DC like that. But hey, the people love you. So. I seen it. Like, no, no. So, he was live. Exactly. And that, yeah. So, nah, I never saw his dad. I, 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 the best thing you can do to give someone is prayer and send those exactly. spiritual things. Like, nah, man, nah. Hell nah. I listen, you looking at the phone right now, I tell you, hey, love you, bro. You may not take his back, but hey, shit. I don't give a damn. That's the way I do. I, like, I just say, hey, what's up hey, or whatever. For real. I'm a consistent person. All right, you ain't fucking with me today. I, I'll call you next week. But I, I don't take nothing personal because I, his journey and I was parallel. Like I always used to say, like, hey, you say, say cheese, I say smile. 
manifest your smile. That's heavy. We we're the same we're the same entrepreneur style people. You know, we just entertain different crowds. But what he used to tell me, well, and, and that's the thing. Like I can't speak on what he used to tell me because it's like, hey man, why are you doing this? He would say like, I used to tell son, I know what I'm doing. You know, because it was my journey to live. It's my journey to live. And if I know my whole thing is, hey, I'm, I'm making a difference. You know, I don't look at these people as this or that. You know, I look at everyone lives in the in-between purgatory phase where every soul has a chance to say, hey, man, listen, you do have a good side. I'm going to show you what a good side look like. He seems to really value your friendship Definitely. when he was on this show. That's what I, I didn't even know about <laughs> y'all's friendship. Yeah. But when, when I asked him something else, it counteracted that. And yeah, he said, came up. that Dr. Rose, and he was really passionate about not jeopardizing what he had with you. You know, and, and you know what I'm, I'm going to tell you, it was, I think it was one where, where, and it's like, we don't never, we never spoke, we spoke this one time, and we all, like, we was like, hey, you know what, we wish she ain't did that. Yeah. For real, we literally said, yeah, we bro. We, that's real, that's You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's it wasn't even true. by, like, us. It was like, I swear to God, and I, and I don't speak on no man I never met. Yeah. But we can read between lines. And like, mm, yeah. I speak on no man I never met. Yeah. Why? Because I always tell me, if it's time for me, if God wants me to meet you, we can meet you. Yeah. And I say it to everybody. Heavy. You know what I'm saying? So like, shit. Heavy. So like, I want to introduce myself person to person first and say, hey, this is spirit that I can be around or this person I can be around or not. Yeah. You know, we ain't got to go heavy in the spirit side. We person, yeah. this nigga I can be around, vibe with shit. Nah, I'm going to go That's with right. my vibes. All right. right. So, um, but nah, it was just, I think it was one of the things where we always know, like, man, that shit ain't nothing. Ain't nothing. Like, literally, like, that fast. It wasn't even, like, it was a next day, two days type shit. But I think Sean Distance always got to hear everyone say, Sean, man, he just get ghosts, but I know Sean. When you're a person that's have about 40 people calling your phone every day, mm -hmm. your anxiety is up because of those 40 people, five things can go wrong. When you're a person that's always want to operate in a space of creating and trying to use the energy to create, sometimes you don't want to deal with this shit. You know, so it's like, nah, I've always understood. And I'm like, bro, I can look at him and I was like, bro, I understand what you're going through. That's, that's why real. people keep multiple phones of like close friends call this one and everybody else. But call what them. if that your one. business and family? Oh my gosh, we said that <laughs> earlier. <laughs> so they call both phones. That's right. So yeah, your yeah. phone is, yeah, because you can get news on any phone now. Yeah. So, <laughs> how do you, so how do you, how do you, uh, yeah, how do you deal with work-life balance? No, no, no. My life is everything I live. And that's why it's so cool because I've okay. always, I've always operated in this space, in my space, literally. Like, and that's what made me comfortable. I always knew like, hey man, shit, you good doing you. I create, I create art, you know, I create merch, I create teeth for a living. So I operate in space that I'm always operating as a servant. You know, because I must give my best in order for people to truly feel my energy. So I, I believe in servitude. So um, I know you said um, to me yesterday that you just gave your life, you know, to Christ. Yep. A um, couple of days ago. Yeah, damn right. <laughs> Shit, man. <laughs> what prompted you a couple of days ago to do that? Because it, it was the verbiage, right, that follows the actions. You know, because you have to be ready to do that you know like it's really one thing is you can't be crowned before you're ready and if you let somebody else crown you before you're ready you gonna be like there you're just blindly in the blind now and what did you change uh habits patterns persistencies and uh and just knowing that i had to have a presence and it's all about deciding how i want to be present and that's why when he uh we talked months ago i was like i'm not ready to talk right now not saying i was an ego ego mad person and i'm like nah I'm doing the best thing that's for me to mend my mentality states when I actually start putting my voice on here that I am firm in what I believe in and letting everybody know I am a fucking sinner. But I do believe in, you know, right from wrong. But I do believe in walking and choosing the right way, mm -hmm. trying to and not letting a hurried circumstance or desperation choose a bad outcome for me, man. Like, and that's the biggest thing that, that, that scares, I would scare anybody. People don't, f people fear not coming back from failure. Right. We know failure is there. We everywhere know everyone, you got to struggle to win. But what if I don't come back? But you got to find. But you can't live in what ifs. You just got to go through it. And that always that what if, the in-between phase. So you got to trust now. And when you get to a point of saying like, who you can really talk to for your problems? Because if you preach, you're going to be all right. Right? 
Mm-hmm. If I preach, I'm gonna be all right. You see I me? Mean? I truly gotta feel that way. So I gotta be calm during the storm. You know, Jesus went on Noah's ark and went to the back and slept. He didn't fall asleep and then he just said, you know, I have to go to sleep, shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I know we're going to be good. Mm-hmm. I know storms come and I know storms go. But I got to know, keep a good mentality by me. You know, like, oh, I've seen that storm before. I know how to get through it. Just stay calm. And when you stay calm and, like, alleviate all the distractions, you know, you can break away and break through. I think mm-hmm. as long as Jesus on the boat. Mm-hmm. long as he in the midst of your situation for me that's what I and, and I, I teach a different way you know that you're open to I, I feel like you have an open knowledge for God that's the way I teach yes sir and so I feel like because cause you you have to whosoever will let them come yeah. so that's anybody that could be anybody it could be any type of person it, you, I don't care how you believe mm-hmm. there's a God that's big enough to understand you yeah. so I don't play around with putting people in boxes so I let people grow. So no matter how you speak, what you say, I'm not here to accuse anyone. I'm here to uplift because I know already God's big enough for the job. Yes, sir. And that's how I look at things. And that's leadership. Yeah. Right. That is true leadership, knowing that in order to be a leader, you must follow and have a relationship. Mm-hmm. You can't have leader without a relationship. That's how you gain leadership. Is then it becomes a pattern. And it becomes ingrained with you with integrity to know that, hey, this leader of the ship is going to lead me because he have a moral standard. Man, that's heavy. My next question is, okay, because you were a nurse, but then you saw where you could make more in being dentistry, right? And, it, and no, it was, uh, it was, this is how it happened, right? Oh, okay. No, this is how it happened, right? Yes, I saw an opportunity to make more, right? But, it was ego, man. I want me to be no damn male nurse. I was serious about meet the fuckers. I'm like, shit, no, man. You got me freaked up. Me got me fucked up. That part of the listen, movie, listen. Man. Let me tell you something. Then it became another thing. You ain't a doctor, you're a dentist. Like, God damn it, man. Shit. I can't win it, man. No, you know what? That's real. But God damn it. You know what? In the black community, we know how to. We, we're not joking about every goddamn thing. <laughs> but guess what I had? Hey, Liz, I'm something, motherfucker. What are you? <laughs> I'm coming back at you with motherfucking bombshells. You talk about me, yeah. We can have a scoring match. It's, hey, this is why I say, hey, 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 I can lead like God or I can lead like Hiller. Which one you want to be, motherfucker? <laughs> but when you went into dentistry, you I'm just sorry, went, don't, you I was just joking no. with everybody. Motherfucker, be what's name? You didn't even, you ended up, you specialize in veneers, right? Hey, see, it's not even a specialty. But because that's what I when, I, when I hear about Dr. Rose, that's that's what I hear you know, about. And you know, you wouldn't even Rose know, you know, wouldn't even know that I love doing regular dentistry. I love meeting people, shit. So it's like, yeah, I like, yeah. damn, I'm known for, I, I want to be known for cosmetics. Yes, but like, damn, I ain't know it's going to be veneers. <laughs> but like, I'm good at it because, you know, I've always wanted to fix teeth. My teeth was fucked up growing yeah, up. I yeah. ain't fixed my teeth until I became a dentist. And really? it was after I was fixing everybody else's teeth. Hell yeah, I had to go through braces and everything, man. Really? Hell yeah. So if you went through braces, why you had to fix it? Because my shit was that fucked up. So braces didn't fix it. Hell no. No. He said, you need something else, man. I thought braces can fix <laughs> anything. Hey, yeah, dude, come in, guy intervene and say, yeah, you get give it news. He said, I got to make you look good, man. You're going to help somebody one day. Yeah, you. But go ahead. I hear bad things about veneers because I hear you have what you say, composite. I hear there's two different kind of veneers. Uh-huh. Some of them last longer. Some of them don't last as long. Some of them, I see a lot of people getting veneers right now and not realizing that, or what I heard is that you have to do maintenance. Some people get it and feel like, oh yeah, I'm good, I'm set, I look good, and I'll look like this for the rest of... I mean... Then I also see some people with veneers that I'm like, look so unrealistic. When I mean unrealistic, some of them are so white Uh that I'm like, that's not even natural white, that's like blinding white. (laughs) Like, why would you even do that? You know... People are just creative. <laughs> like, for real. I'll be like, man, let me tell you something. You think I can fit that on that, but I can try. I'm going to try, man. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you the truth. First of all, hey, I have some serious concerns. Oh, you man, tell them the truth? Yeah, yeah, I don't lie. The fuck I'm lying you for? No, seriously. Because you have to like this. Wow. So I have to love it. Yeah. So I'm going to give you some real artistic abilities now. I'm not going to sit down and play with you because wow. this is money involved. It's emotions. It's time spent. It's energy that, hey, you know, it can go either way. You can be crying and saying, I love, thank you, Dr. Rose. He's like, man, nah, Dr. Rose, let me just try again. So, no, I'm going to give you my best try. Even if I don't like it, I'm going to tell you, like, this is what I want to do about it. This is what I want to change about it. That's love. Because 
I'm going to always have to present you in your best light and my best light because you are my billboard. Yeah. But also, you got to feel comfortable and say, yeah, I went the Rose. Oh, yeah, I went the Rose. You can't be like, yeah, man, I don't fuck Rose. <laughs> oh, no, hell no. You know, no. So you do they have to have maintenance to it to keep it up? Or I mean, can they just do it one time? Dentist every six years, I mean, every six months. So, yes, you got to have maintenance, man. <laughs> it's crazy, man. You. Like, I'm telling you, if you didn't know, like, dentistry is so foreign to my people. Mm-hmm. And this is why I say, man, God must put you in this motherfucker for a reason. You know, so we can be all. They ain't doctors, be. period. Cause they don't even go to a um, healthcare doctor, yeah. much less a dentist. Man, listen, cause that's the first thing we cut when we ain't got nothing in the hood. We ain't even pay no damn you know, insurance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was wrong with you. You better brush your teeth mm-hmm. or wipe it with a cloth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You talking about boy? You better wipe with some uh, a towel in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just, got, I'm trying to get over you it. You rub your teeth like when, when, when I think shit, about revenues. the Dallas market. Dennis, I think about Dr. Watts, then I think about you. You know, in what? my mind, I think about Dr. Watts and the goals. I said, now we got my boy, Dr. I mean, Dr. Watts, and then I got Dr. Rose doing you, the Valiers. Have I mean, anybody ever told you? You know, you know, it's so incredible about that feeling, knowing that, man, we will always be in the center of culture. Okay. You know, and so it's like when people are like, man, why are you rap? I was going to be in the center of it anyway. Mm. <laughs> God gave me this vessel of entertainment. So, shit, you better brace it how it comes now and love this energy because it's. Like seriously, you either got goals or you 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 want to smile. That's it. You know, so it's like when you do that, you got to operate in responsibility and leadership now, and start telling people like, "I know you're young, but you can't get them right now." You know, I know this. What's but the you youngest need this. person that ever came in and I'd say they wanted? I didn't had probably about uh, you know with, with anybody that's and plus my Instagram being kind of accessible to me it's, a lot. It's, it's heavy. So I, I would say a lot of young kids ask all the time now. Really? And this is why uh, it makes you want to walk in leadership now. Wow. Because it's like someone has to educate and know, like, hey, you're good, man. Listen, this shit you need to go through, it's gonna mold you to appreciate these teeth. But you get them now, you're gonna fuck around and eat these in five years because you're not gonna appreciate them. You know? I think yeah. a lot of people who, especially with kids, I really think they need to see like a counselor or psychologist or something first because I think a lot of people, when they do that, they're saying that, okay, I'm not pretty, I'm not, you know. I, Exactly I think it's what they saying. In, right. So I think they have to find out that they're beautiful inside first before they fix anything outside because they're just never going to be satisfied. That's why cosmetic is so popular right now because people are trying to get the perfect perfection, I mean, which is there's no such scary thing. Because once you, re, once you try it and you start realizing like, oh, characters fit start coming out now if you can't fix anything else. So you start realizing like, yep, shit, I feel to see the people ugly side if they got ugly side because you look good. Right. But what else you got to give me now? Ugly. Oh, shit. God damn it. I want, I want, Not my patience. My patience, I love them. I'm talking about people in general. <laughs> shit. Look, something that stuck out to me is the, the jury, man. Huh. I mean, you, you, I mean, yeah, you, this rap image is here in front of ECEO on Boss Talk 101. The chains is dangling, you know. It's Dr. Rose here. Just I'm, just, I'm just trying to figure out, like, when did you take on this love for, for this jury man, like this, this shit, man? I mean, listen, when you're, uh, I think, like, I was giving the spirits of one of those those kings and kings, right? They know they just gotta have that shit. Man. That's real. Egyptians, like just they wore it all around. Shit, you they like it. You like love motherfucking it. shit. They man, we're like you can't bury it. Well, they did. You can't take it. They did. They trapped it too. They ain't made traps. Somebody gonna be digging I know up you motherfucker gonna try to dig, and, and guess what happened for this shit? Digging here, you finna get hit with a bunch of boulders on top of your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they no, nah, they protected this shit out their life too. Like no, I am smart enough. No, I'm out thinking you. So, wow. and that's when you know they were like very highly intelligent. Why? Because they knew the ultimate thing was death. So they made device very intricate traps after they was dead, right? So you know, like they have a place to meet. Like it's called the, like the uh, the place of gods where they share knowledge. They always like every kingdom have a place of gods where they share knowledge. And now, in the, like when you put yourself in the Egyptian and you realize like what is the place where all the gods can meet and share knowledge? Well, they took away church and school. So where are they going to share knowledge at? We don't read. We don't believe in history because we know we all looking at fruit. So that's why a lot of people are mimicking now because they really don't want to share knowledge. You just mimic. And that's why you like all the, there's no true like faces that goes with the character now. Okay, but here, here, here it is again. You, that was you, a journey. You, I just you, took this you, you, <laughs> you wear six figures on your neck. Huh? You got six figures on your neck. Uh, yeah. Yeah, pretty. If not, I, I, I know I'm, I'm kind of... I'm kind of I know we, like, it's crazy. Like, yeah, I don't... Yeah, I'm not, but this is <laughs> real. Like, like, people would look at you and, 
and, and be like, damn, you know what I'm saying? Damn, he got it, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And they don't know what you went through to get to it, but it sends us went through a wars. stereotype it, uh, uh, of uh, who does he think he is that he gets to walk around with six figures on his neck like this? I don't think it's, it sends a stereotype to those who are insecure that never met my energy before. Okay. Because if it, if I'm big enough to transfer to the whatever medium that I came through and touched you that way, man, God damn, thank you God for letting me walk in this light. <laughs> Shit, man. But let me must know that hey, man, I know people out there that they are to there to sent to seek and destroy. Too materialistic. Yeah. So, but and that's why I told. Uh, I was with some kids today. I literally told them like, and one of them said, "What? What is?" I told him, "What's success?" He's like, "Money." I said, "Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted." Then I inserted. I had to uh, like give them energy. I had to transfer my energy to the crowd, but I did it through money, right? And I literally said, "Hey, do that this whole program." Y'all knew me, so y'all trust me to give y'all money. But don't be a fool and dance for money, for money. Mm -hmm. wow. Because that's not success. Mm -hmm. It isn't. Because anybody can make you dance. Mm -hmm. Wow, but you, that's true. Did you, so, you don't even <laughs> seem as if you would have to even be in the rap field. You're a successful dentist. I don't rap. You do. You, you I have speak a singing. The, I speak. I got the, I I got the proof right here. I, I, but it is, I, I got the ask damn them, proof. If, if, ask my team. They all be around me. We talk about about onomatopoeias and everything in my life, and literally, I literally speak in a medium that hey, it's art, it's performance art. I literally look at it as performance art to heal, get over, get it out there. I'm not literally forcing upon people, you know. But I love the shit out of it, and I, I appreciate if everyone too good this, at it. Like no, nah, yeah, it's one of the things where nah, this nigga really you do if, this. If, if we go back into it, some of those sounds were created with voices that we and my team have made. It wasn't even no beat at first. We just creating voices. You know, and literally adding the engineering to the beat. So if people really know, like, now nah, we really do this, and that's why we're more interested in entertainment, you know, because we really have a real brand, a true brand called Rose Aesthetics. Rose Aesthetics. Manifest smell out of it right now. <laughs> Log on, and we have a chance to win a uh, free giveaway of all those teeth. Because we now we market for our brand. You do our entertainment. Win? They went, they just log on to win or they no, have so to buy you enter, one of those? No, so you enter a chance. Uh, you can enter. Uh, you can buy a digi pack to enter a chance. It gives you uh, more raffles. It gives you more entries, right? Mm -hmm. It gives you up to 900 entries and you wow. buy more of those, right? So you can also enter for free. And enter free by just submitting your email. You can share it and everything. So it's one of the things where we really do push a, a, a things where we try to physically transform mm -hmm. what we're doing to people and give them something tangible. You know, like, hey, you're not just buying, you know, a, a sell yes. but you bought or something that you can't touch we give you some tangible right so we have a digi pack we talk about it's, it's almost like a prelude to my book mm -hmm. you know where it's talking about some of the things I went through coming out man listen I had to find girl first I literally mm -hmm. told like I literally say like I mean you gotta you gotta have a journey you, you, you gotta know what you book man like the odyssey you gotta know how to take it on the journey and literally talk about the journey. You can't write a book too early, man. I ain't done living. Mm -hmm. Shit, ain't my story ain't close. I write a book. What is what's next? God, all right, all right. I mean, this is what I'm gonna do to your motherfucker ass. Overcome this, nigga. You know, no, nigga. Yeah, let me, exactly. Let me stop. Let me exactly. let me live a little bit. And what I mean, let's slow down. When is the drawing? When the drawing is actually, uh, it closes this uh, weekend. Oh <laughs> man. Oh uh, shit. Get this out. Nah, but uh, shit. Whenever it comes out, listen. Uh, because it's man, we setting up systems in place to always make sure that we give back to our people through smiling mm -hmm. and helping uh, those who truly want to speak life into existence. You know, speak more into life every day. Um, top three artists of all time, dead or alive, any genre. Number one. Who me top three artists? Man, listen. To, I you, gotta to have you, your top three. Your my, top my three. top three. Any number genre. One. Uh, number one of all time. I don't have a number one. I have a, fluid. I have a fluid, no. man. No. Dead or alive. We only do three. Yeah, only do one. three. They've yes. been doing this ever since I started this show. I need you on this one. Dr. My era. I'm going to say my era. Lil, Lil Wayne is a go to my era. Okay, okay. so Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne. Number, number two. One. Number two. Kanye. That number three. Bad. Number three. Jay-Z. Dope, dope. I like it. I like it. I can rock with it. You said Lil Wayne first, so we in the South. I, I always yeah. I cut up about Down that. Down South, we I'll do be it better. Up. If you don't say the South, I'm going in on you. But you did great. I got to, man. <laughs> now, nah, for real. And then you went Midwest, right? And then you went all the way up to the East Coast. You doing your thing. Hey, nah, <laughs> man. Nah, 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 because they all, they all attacked, like, they all attacked it from a different angle. Yeah. They all attacked it from a different angle. And when you look at it, and I, I swear, I used to think this all the time, like, man, Jay-Z ain't the creator's as Kanye. But then you think about, like, well, the art of being solid is golden. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and we seeing it right now with Kanye. 
I was just about to ask you about Kanye with what he just did wearing that um, white, what is it, White Lives Matter t shirts? Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? I think um, the message was not appropriate at the end of the day mm -hmm. because it's, it kind of confuses his audience. And that's the biggest thing that he had going was people had surety in Kanye. But now you're like, you so go back and forth and with the wishy wash. It's like, man, what do people stand for you with? I want to ride with you on this, but when I talk with you and them people, the naysayers come back and say, I told you he was going to do it again. Mm -hmm. And like, God damn. How do I stand? Like, no, I can't stand beside a person who don't know himself right now. Yeah. So it's not that we give up on Kanye. We just, it's not, we can't stand beside you because you're going through. The imbalance. Because ever since he lost his mom, everybody was always was saying the wells of a woman cry. Going crazy. He's been going crazy. Because That's what everybody's been saying. Only person to know that can tell him he's truly in pain is his mom. And she's gone. And she's gone. So you then you rely on over, over your queen, but your queen, her idols is the entertainment. So yep. who can truly tell you? Who can truly tell you when you've been called? A genius by everyone. And everything was in your control until it wasn't in your control. Then you realize, mm -hmm. gee, you don't have no fucking control. But then he go back and forth playing with God. But then you want him to save you, but you go back and forth. Like, God is good. Then the, I love war and Jesus. Like, dude, that's a true thing of blasphemy. Like, that is really right. saying, using the Lord's name in vain. That is true. Where it's like, dog, I can't even understand this message. Because it's coming from a vessel that's weak. He's, again, you know how I am. I just told you how it was earlier. I don't put anybody in a box. We all evolve and we're, not, we're all, we are, we are work in progress. All of us. Yes. So when I look at all of the different people and where they're at, like mm -hmm. you said, there's different things about all three of those people you named. Yeah. You named them for a reason because yeah. there's something great in it. And you've them. seen that great part <laughs> and you say, that's my number two because you've seen that and therefore we don't, even as he evolves, oh. as he evolves, like, yeah. like I talk to people that talk to him. I talked to a guy that talked to him today, no cap. Like we, this thing go, it go hard. Like for some of the things I've seen him do for other people, it, it can't be, nobody else could have done it. I don't think we forget. You I know think, what I'm saying? I mean, like this is heavy, man. That's the true part of like seeing, like getting a foundation, right? Coming back home, getting grounded. You know, having someone to tell you like, I see what you're going through. You're not alone. Yeah, you know, but when you ostracize everyone in the way and say you're not alone, we're saying you're a reflection of what you're doing spiritually and mentally. So it's like we understand him. Yeah, for but sure. he keeps screaming and saying we don't understand you. No, we do. So what do we do now that we know we're at this place with you? You, we people have all a lot of people have destined can you wait to be this leader of the new generation, right? So he's saying people are saying can we ready to ride with you? Now do something. You're fighting the system, but it's the inconsistencies that people can't stand by sometimes. And this it is like God comes in pattern. He's he know what you're gonna get from him. He's gonna save you. Just not when you want to, but it's like you speak Kanye speaks both sides. You think about Kanye, Kanye doing exactly what Kanye's supposed to do. We sit here and talk about Kanye right now because this is also a marketing strategy. This is this is I don't is even something. think it's marketing, man. It, I'm just telling you, no, when he real. does things, when he get ready to move, he move in a way. He don't. You remember when, That's what he, intelligent when, people when do. he took that that mic from Taylor Swift and then he comes out in an all red suit and says, uh, uh, what he said, let's take a toast for the douchebag and all that. Hey, this dude is doing this every single time. You know, let me tell you something. Coming from a person that I always say I'm a genius, right? Everyone always say, it's something called justification efforts. In country, uh, uh, contra uh, contractual, uh, uh, I can't even talk about that because I can't think of that right now. <laughs> but I'm gonna be real. But justification efforts, when you do something and you justify it uh, for it and literally like make it re the reason why it happened, right? Mm -hmm. That's playing God. But it's not the truth. But reason. it's not, no, no, like, nah, man, he's just so gifted with his words of persuasion. You know, he can talk you into everything. He can put on a good performance. Just say, yeah, that was on purpose. No, Kanye acted on instinct and realized that he do know about God. So he can come back and say, yes, but you only know, like, you know, you just acting the instinct. But then when you're highly intelligent, you know, like, ah, oh, God was bringing me through it. So just like you're highly intelligent. So you can say, yeah, it's marketing because you know, 
he may have something bigger coming. Correct. Mm -hmm. But it's the way you use the name while you go through it. Do you think he does something bigger after he make a move, or do you think he already knows he's going to do something bigger uh, before he make a certain I move? I think Kanye is You see all, what I'm saying? No, no, no. I understand what you're saying. Kanye, and that's when it goes to science, which one came first, right? The thought <laughs> or the manifestation. You know, the manifestation or the actions, right? I mean, you always go through that. So, and that's what highly intelligent people build with all the time. And that's the whole thing about problem solutions, because you can think away all the way to each one of them. But guess what? You cannot control people. Mm. So you got to learn the power of avoidance. Mm. Mm. And we we got to talk about this, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to get into this, man. Yes, sir. You got, got him enough time, man. Uh, oh, yeah, man. It's a Dr. Segment. Rose, Rosie. Flight 717. Yes, what Kedersky. is that about? What is this name about? Uh, it is about uh, doing shadow work, knowing your darkness in, uh, in order to understand the light. And uh, that was a phase in my life when it's like I was going through, uh, coming back out to getting shot and going through, uh, just dealing with people and dealing with anxieties of some sort of uh, some of the uh, days leading up to how I got shot. And they were starting to re, uh, come back into my mentality where I was trying to overcome it. You have anxiety so, now still? Nah. You good? Because, uh, you know, God, I was going to supply you with health, wealth, protection, abundance, uh, and all those things. So you got to put it around you. You got to go make it to afford it to put it around you. So you gotta be smart and make smart uh, decisions. And we all look for mentors to help us make smart business deals and, and that's the same thing is. Every mentor is a spiritual advisor. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Cartier. Yeah, Sadarski. Let's talk about it. What, oh. what was the process? What, what, what made you write it? Ah, uh, man. I don't write for one. You don't they, write? I, no, you I punch don't. in? Uh, I don't even punch in. I literally go freestyle the whole freestyle. song. The whole song, and I literally and like, all right, cool, I'm cool, y'all. One time, one <laughs> shot. If they ask me, listen, these people behind me have literally seen me freestyle the whole song and us go back and clean up a few words, and it became out like, man, that shit hard. Faith, no, was a freestyle. Faith was a freestyle. Uh, Fly was a freestyle. Viral was a freestyle that me and Mozzie started working on. Uh, what else was a freestyle? Do it better was definitely a freestyle. Mm. Uh, Cartier was. Uh, Talking, did you drink it? No. Uh, yeah, that was a freestyle. IDK it was, was a freestyle. who? IDK. IDK. IDK was a freestyle. But what's it, the one with the? Who, who, okay, give me run, run me down through the visuals. Have you put visuals with any of these? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, which one? one? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, we got visual to right now, which is doing well. We got right visual now. to viral. Explain right now to me. Right now is a song that uh talks about me overcoming and actually realizing that hey, it's time to step up. And uh, be the person that God has caused you to be or be the person that you thought you were at the time. And uh, I was truly going through a phase of figuring out what I want to do because I felt like I've always stuck. Even though I was progressing, I just felt stuck because, you know. Spiritually. I, yeah, spiritually. Like truly spiritually. And I kept on. But I would see these signs and there's something would just tell me this is the way to go. And I would listen. But I just still felt stuck. You know, you can always, you can listen and still, like, you know, and just still feel stuck. Like, yeah, I'm doing what you tell me. Like, school. Like, when all oh, is saying go to school, not knowing, like, man, this, these niggas really trying to protect you. Mm -hmm. You just, like, these niggas saying go to school, go to school. So that's Who? how it was. So people would tell me leaning this way. I still was just leaning. Who produced this? Uh, this so Right it, now. And this is the best thing about my, my skill, my resources, my patient. All right. Mm. Patient produced? Yes, uh, yes, sir. We worked out a deal, man. He got some badass beats on there, man. Gave me a whole bill package, power wow. exchange, and resources, man. So, uh, gave me a whole. I actually got a, a Grammy producer on there. Yes. Slick What's music. his name? Slick music. Slick music. Yes. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and, yeah, we, uh, <laughs> we bought her. We bought her. Uh, man. So, it was, yeah, a, God has blessed me with this. Wow. So, it's like I've always said, yes, man. It was one of the things where the opportunities was in my life. So I wouldn't just, this is how I know entertainment was made for me because these people was coming and we was changing. You know, I have a service. What about viral? Talk to me about viral. viral. Um, what was the process in it? Um, uh, what, uh, how, did you, how did you come up with it? Oh, no, I see the process was we was in the studio uh, after work and me and Mizey was together. Me and like, man, just put a beat on because I like hearing beats first mm -hmm. for the first time in the studio so it can jog my memory the first time. Right, and I can literally get on my like, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. I go through the whole process. Hey, might just replay it, replay it, replay it, replay it. You're like, what the hell you just say, bro? I say, run it back. You gonna hear some words? Then he run it back. He's like, whoa, bro, I know you just said that. I'm like, yeah, 
Then you're like, okay, okay, go clean it up now, bro. All right. I'm like, nah, no, hold Like, nah, just clean it up. It's good. But you kind of mumble in these places. A little bit, then go clean it up. You know, then I got so good at that. Then I literally in a freestyle. I said, I let company, so I had a mumble. I learned to shoot before I had a jumper. More levels than a more loner. And I literally was thinking like, oh shit, I literally talked about my uh, my mumbling part when I lack confidence. Like literally like, oh shit, it was the truth. And I'm like, damn. And yeah, <laughs> like so you just know how to turn on and let it go speak from the heart. But when you wow. hear a beat and anything you speak about at that moment, is that something you normally like just went through or is there some things that like over a period the, of time? And that's the whole part of knowing about heuristics, right? Shortcuts to memory. You speak about what you're around. That's why a lot of people are around all of them demon places and all they do is rap about killing. You know, but I just need to hear that. So, uh, right now, it viral. Right man. now, viral. What's the next one that you got a visual with? Uh, man, which one we got? Uh, 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 uh the last one, grew, Rose from the Pavement. Rose grew from the pavement. I yeah, like that. I got a, uh, I got a, a visual to that one. That one's hard. That one's more of a uh, punchline, like where the true heartbreak, uh, the true nature boy and heartbreak kid, because I I do believe in veganism and all that stuff, but I ain't just a true vegan. I'm a country <laughs> eater. All right, motherfucker, I ain't even stop me from eating it. If I need some meat, <laughs> motherfucker, I'm eating it. I am going to be a true carnivore. <laughs> <laughs> I am mean it, man. Yeah, it Listen, good, I'm making masks for so long and not eating meat. I can tough it out and, oh, yeah, I can do it. I can I can do it, but sometimes I need meat. No, real time. <laughs> like for real, I ain't one of them niggas who act like, yeah, I don't know. I'm a tree hugger. <laughs> <laughs> I respect y'all, man. That's true power. What's so, your favorite? I, I on don't, that? don't don't leave. No, the what's rose your from the pavement. Oh, I want to know. Oh, I want to okay. talk about. So it that more. was uh, there was a lot of wordplay in it because a lot of people. It go to the thing where it's like you do want to see if you got penmanship. You know, and they want to want songs I want to write down and like just play some riffs. Mom, see the shit of face. You've been in hot water, got a pickle to this purple lake. Man. You know, then you know, damn, bean, your son. Then you know, bean is like coffee. And hot water percolate is what boils coffee and all this mm -hmm. shit. So you're like, oh shit, I can really do this shit. I'm nerd. Wow. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> Not real. That's love. Too many false gods in the mask that try to perpetrate. Your homie mm -hmm. in the bag in the morph from all the perky eight. Shit get fucking ugly in them goals. I see the stirp you take. Man. Ain't no malice in my heart. I've been free since free was judging 106 in part. Man, <laughs> stop playing. I like that, man. So, but when you really think about the process of this music, how long did it take you to do this project, right? It and took then time. I want you to ask, what did you ask a while ago? Was, what's your favorite? What's his favorite on this, on this whole project? Mm -hmm. <laughs> my favorite in phases because once I create a song, I'm like, oh, this ain't hit. Man, I replay that bit in my face to it burn out my head. I'm like, ah, that shit suck. <laughs> But I created that song. I created that album in phases. Okay. Like that, literally, some of them songs are old. Okay, you know, some of the songs released, but they was like two years old. Mm. But it was in a phase that I was going through because, you know, that's how I was feeling, mm -hmm. and it still became relevant. It's like, damn, there must be a vibe, and then you still feel the same way. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it's real. But uh, it was one of the things where it's like, nah, my favorite song. It's hard to even say my favorite song. I would say The Other Side is one of my favorite songs. Also, uh, Faith. Faith is my favorite song. Wow. I can literally say, Faith and everyone loves right now. Like, everyone loves right now. A lot of people love Viral because it's a bop. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and do it better. A Bebe loved that damn song. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Shout out when to Bebe. I, shout out to Bebe. Man, when I say, when I first, I sent Bebe that song, this bullshit with him. You know, and literally, he said, he called me. You know, he, yeah. he, he, he like, hey. the, So the viral one. The, no, the, no, let's do it better. Fa okay, do, do it, okay, it better. Do it better. That's a downside. Let's do it better. Yeah, Makes yeah, sense. yeah. Kyle, all <laughs> I don't know, I don't want that in my phone. Bitch, turn. I don't even know. Man. <laughs> so that boy, baby, like that dude. Man, Bella. literally, man. When I, I swear to God, we was all still like, baby, what the hell? Then we started playing like, oh, shit, he said that. Like, literally, once again, it's a song that I didn't know sing. Wow. And when I actually heard, like, damn, I said six calls all unknown. I must literally have some plan to play on my phone. Right. Like, <laughs> man, that's crazy. Go ahead. Um, How long you been in the industry? The industry? Yeah. I would say since uh, I started dental school in 2012. I was doing dental school programs like in 2010 and 11. And since it's, I would say, cor correct me if I'm wrong, it's a predominantly white industry? Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. I respect y'all too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, know, I play that game too. Have you faced racism in it? Good, good question. Uh, have I faced racism? I don't even think the thing is, man, 
And this is why it's so deep. It's just morals for them sometimes. And that's the scary thing about it. Mm. It ain't racist. It's just their morals. And that's why the white lives. And tradition. Because some people don't know any better because that's what they've been taught. And that's why the White Lives Matter shirt was a problem. Mm -hmm. Right? Wasn't because the Black Lives Matter was still in this. No, because, yes, the financials part of Black Black Lives Matter maybe was fucked up, but the pain that we still inherit for years ago, why you think they want to invest into our pain in music wise? Because they know it's real, nigga. That's real. They know it's real magic in it. They know it's it was, uh, someone said, Yeah, that boy got some pain in his voice. I know he go hard. Well, duh. Look what he's been through. And he's finally get a chance to lash out. And guess what? Someone took advantage of him and they profited off of it. But y'all say he sold his soul, but he was just trying to find a way out. And he just found the wrong person to give it to. To his pain too Because they didn't nurture it They didn't say grow Because this pain Is always going to last But you got to know How to nurture it You know like Hey it's going to be Some good days And some bad days But I won't complain So when you're faced with it I mean that like you just walk off Because you know exactly What it is Yeah It's pain And people like Man you look at life From a pain But no I look at life From overcoming Because it feels good To overcome mm-hmm. That is the biggest rush Having all those Dopamines and the nucleus Occupants to give me A reward sensation but I'd rather my reward not come from condition that I got to receive my blessings from another man. We conditioned that another man has to blow us up to make it. That when I was all in front of him saying, hey, no, 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 y'all. You can make your own brand and get the same attention, be on the same stages, yes. Did I get the big thousands of dollars contracts to do it? No. I didn't, but shit, God gave me the stage just like the big rappers to be on tour, to uh to go rap in front of this area to go speak to and then, so it's like shit. He just gave it my way. He gave it his way. You said um I heard you say to me yesterday that you like to deal with the regular people more than you like to deal <laughs> with the celebrities. Because it's it's just like a lot of them are still kids. You know? And a lot of them know like dentistry is new. Like it's not it's not new in the field of White people being predominantly in it, but it's new for black people, mm-hmm. right? So we approach it from a different standpoint because we care. We care. But, you know, someone lashing out and some like people not knowing how to deal with pain because yeah, you yeah. go through with pain. Like, sometimes people are like, ah, nah, this journey of getting your teeth I ain't just all peachy as those rules. New case alert scenes. Nah, man, people go through pain to fix it, but they had to go through pain to even get to the point of thinking they was going to fix it. See, you know, your teeth tell a man, lot about yourself, no, man. You're right. Let me tell you something. It lets you, let you know. Yeah, he just went to the thing and say, pull it because he couldn't afford it. Because it has a lot to do with your health, too, doesn't it? It does. Like, because um, a friend of mine. I thought you were smelling I, your breath. No. <laughs> 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 oh, that was not no, 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 mine. No. Um, <laughs> a friend of mine um, ended up in an emergency room. He had some issues with his teeth, but they said it would, if it could drain and go to his heart and give him a heart attack. It can. That's all infections. And that's the thing, man. Like, and that's why you got to always walk in the lane of integrity. Because you're a doctor. I like to, I'm a doctor, y'all. I got to be right. Because people are automatic. Trust me. You know, so I got to walk in the light. So, when, when you see people in pain, man, they let you have it. You may not be the cause of it, but hey. You're right in front of them right now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it's, and like I said, that type of pain, tooth pain is new. Like, that is different. Hey, you ever had a toothache? Oh, shit, he brought you to your knees, huh? Mm. Yeah, you, you was balled up like a baby. Anything touched it, blew on it, you saw the real you. Leave me alone. You don't want to talk to nobody. Yeah. <laughs> no one knows they need a dentist till they need one. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want to talk to you about something before because I'm going to let you go after this unless you uh, have something mm-hmm. else. I want to talk to you about um, just the charitable events that you do, uh-huh. the things that, that stick out to you the most, the things that you enjoy doing when it comes to giving back, like to the kids like you were doing earlier today. Man, she's just fun. Like, I just be having fun with it. It's so, it's, it's, it's one of the dynamics where it's like, man, you know, like, you can step into it, be a role model, and just, you know, give up. Like, I, I mean, listen, a lot of my friends now are starting to come towards the light. I don't know. Something happened in someone's water, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, they know that shit. The inspiration date is coming on earth, man. God is coming back. But it's neither here nor there. Abba! 
<laughs> have there ever been a kid that um now I forgot like, what the whole question my bad yeah, I'm about to explain this shit yeah, I'm like, just asking you about what really sticks out to you about when you're doing the events because you've been giving back for a long time ever since God's been blessing you and um I just was kind of just trying to Get people to see, man. Just because when you get when when God gives you a success or when you become successful, mm -hmm. um, the joy comes and you can help more people. When you broke, you can't help nobody really. Like, but with conversation, um, maybe carry something if you're not too weak. But when you've been blessed with finances, you have to find a place of giving. In mm -hmm. I feel like it's kids because uh, everyone presumes kids as innocent, right? And that's right. the thing we all protect. So I, everyone has a weakness for them. You know, so where I, I choose to give it back in a, in a sense to kids is to always say, you know what, we must protect innocence, but we also must walk in a way to say, hey, this is what we're doing. You know, I am stripping myself down and say I'm a regular person. Y'all see me as Dr. Rose. I see myself as Jerry Rosenberg, the person to come to deliver a message. You can be whatever the fuck you want to be, man. Listen, you get on stage and walk, talk, act the way you act. You can come in and put a dental jacket on and be a doctor with a white coat because I did it. I'm giving you endless Boundaries. Mm -hmm. Literally just put your mind in there and say, you know what, I can be whatever because I see this man has built a lot through this and he did, didn't do it by himself. He did it with a team. I always brag about my team because I know like it motivates them. Hey, yeah, it do motivate them because see, when people walk to them like, hey, let's take a picture and do all this. And they're like, hey, no, nah, we spraying up bunnies. So now is you do it the right way. You'll get your nonprofit, you know, and you set it up to where everyone eats, and that's what we're on the journey to do now. Not as a way where I have to see the money. I don't have to physically see the money. You know, I have to know that it's being divided in a way to where everyone receives their fair share of abundance. You have to be fair. And with a leadership, sometimes you got to make hard moves and decisions. You just have to be fair. And you got to know that when people know that you will make a fair decision, they know that you will have a good moral compass. Because, like, you know what? It ain't in my favor, but I understand why I did because it's fair. You know, like, oh, what's the name? Dr. But, Rose, um, man. No, the, um, my extension of that same question is, can you recall a kid or an adult or anybody you came across when you were giving back that had, like, a story where it touched you so much where it may even had brought you to tears? All of them. <laughs> no, I'm serious. No, I mean, listen. Give me one. Give uh, me and, one. And the thing is, right, and this is the hardest part when you put yourself in a lane of doing everything. Because I get stories from doctors that's going through stuff, you know, mentally. I get stories from kids that's going through stuff, fighting stuff mentally. I get stuff from friends because my, I'm my shoulder for my friends, too, as well. We both lean on each other. We talk. And, and you know, other life. So it's like I really am looked up to uh, from my people to where it's like, man, it'd be so many stories. And I literally take time to read them. Like I'm the guy that's like, man, I try to help. And God be like, you can't, you, you got to know your limits. You can't do this by yourself. And like, even in my office where I can give, I can do as much as my abilities allow me to do. Mm -hmm. So I either grow and like, if you need an implant, right? I don't place implants. I have a surgeon to come in and place them. Like okay. for example, right? So, but if I decide to give a free case away, I only can give away what I can do. Right? Mm -hmm. Everything else, I would have to either pay my doctor to do it. Right. Or I would have to ask them to you know, donate their time right. to do it, you know. So it would be a true sacrifice because I am limited in some mm -hmm. aspects of my dentistry. So it's the same way is this when you truly care about everybody you encounter, like they do is like, man, listen, I have some people come and ask me a job like, man, it's like, shit, I can't help you in that aspect, mm -hmm. you know, because sometimes you can let people into your business if, and they, yeah, they be right. problems become your problem. You become drained because you take on the problem that God damn, it, I thought exactly. I can take it on, but I invited you, and guess what? I, I let you in too. <laughs> Shit, you came <laughs> in at the footstep, and I said, Ah, oh, come on, man, motherfucker, I got you. Then you realize, like, shit, mm. fuck. What did I get myself into? Exactly, and that's what you learn with a team. That's why it's so important for a team because you got to divide and conquer. Because I won't relate to you because you're a woman. You know, I can understand you. That's the best thing I can ever do for you is understand you as a woman. You're going to need somebody else to speak your language when it comes <laughs> to changing the pad every month. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I'm serious. Yeah. So it's the same way with this. It's like, shit, I can remember stories where like kid asked me, like, how do you get in dental school? I said, shit, man, listen, if I really told you I got in dental school, shit, man, I was a good speaker, you know? And I made my story transform on my paper. 
Wow. Mm-hmm. You know, in that paper, and literally, if you literally look at the Sun kind of interviews, I was talking like, yeah, man, I made them feel my pain. Shit. Yeah. I ain't lie. Yeah, I talk about affirmative action and making them feel my pain and know that they had a soft spot for it. I always say that. Mm-hmm. They I do. When you did. Yeah, I ain't going to guess, but that's why I said, like, nah, my manipulation came with thinking, you know? But it wasn't a bad. It was like, nah, you in survival. Nigga, show your pain. But this time, you're benefiting you, so you're not selling your soul. You're educating your life. So that's the thing. We all get out there and show our pain to the wrong people that take advantage of it and keep you in a weak state mm-hmm. because pain, you try to exert, try to overcome pain because you're already weak. So when you take on kids, right, you try your best to lead them because you can't control kids because they're going to act off desperation sometimes, you know, and that's when you're like, like man, I love these kids. So I got to put it in a way to where I have systems to where it can literally engage everyone and say, hey, I'm not leaving you behind because I do get busy and I have to go out here and go work to provide. But we, I still care about you, too. So when you start taking on too many stories, it's like, shit, mm-hmm. do the people around me grow? Or it's like, they're all like, yeah, I, I read them, but I can't just put a specific face on one because the ones I take it in are the ones I really care about at the moment. And I've always cared about it and it takes a lot of energy, but I still have to put systems in place of people with their credibility to say, hey, guide them. You can trust them. They're people, me, and I have to go lead a different area right now. Man, Doc, Dr. Rose, man, this was on a, a epic interview. I've been wanting to get this interview, and uh, man, thank you for coming on the show, man. You, uh, <clears throat> the new location, is the other location still prevalent? Um, what are we doing? Man, we, we're making dentistry fun for everyone. You see, I woke everyone up. Get your ass here, because it's marketing time, motherfucker, man. Listen, Manifest Your Smile is more more than just teeth. It is saying, hey, I want to speak life into existence. Speak more to life every day. Manifest it. Make a plan. Go act on it. Think about it first because your thoughts of a God's now because I just manifested that you would change. You would follow the light. So, follow the rose aesthetics because cleanliness is next to God. Get your teeth fit, man. I want to ask you a question. I know you've been doing it so long, man. So, when you started this, what did you see it growing as? When I started this, man, I mean, I think it was it was because of COVID. We we didn't have a, a lot of people coming in the store, and we really we we do other things, of course. But it was like, okay, the people not gonna come to us, but we need to be doing something to try uh-huh. to get to the people. And so we did this, and when I as soon as I got over and sat down, we got tons of calls. Man, you belong in that seat. Man, you the <laughs> dopest dude. We realized you God's do this, man. Instead. Yeah, it was like, this is my ministry. So I get to talk to people. Uh-huh. I already been talking to people in this store for 16 years when they come through that door, helping my people, keeping our dollar circulating within our people. And You wouldn't even know you was doing this, like you was in this area for 16 years. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to be real. But God does I had an ex-girlfriend that stayed right around the corner from me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I was here when you, I, I promise you, I would. You, <laughs> you see Taylor Gabriel up there? Taylor, start, he's a no, NFL player. Oh, yeah, you can't <laughs> yeah, see. You can't but see. he's an no, NFL yeah. player. He, st- he was in this store. It's another guy that does yeah. a physical therapy mm-hmm. uh, doctor now. Yeah. He come from this store. Like, I seen kids grow up out of this store. There were kids growing, going to so high school. I school over and literally wish you would have came around the corner. I was right here waiting on you, baby. Mr. Even Mr. Hit that. Mr. Hit that used Mr. to shop there when, when he first started out. Ah shit, man. Listen, this is a way here, man. Listen, I listen, this part of my town was foreign, man. <laughs> <laughs> this year, I used to come out here for a piece of what the hell? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, I'm yeah. glad you came out here tonight. Long time right? here, man. Man, it's just it's, it's a blessing. I get to be with my people, man. I get to talk to y'all. Like I got to meet you. I got to meet a lot of people, linear people, people mm-hmm. that I never would have thought. I get calls from everywhere, even other countries. Like today, yes, sir. They want to come on Boss Talk. They just see it, and some people just fly in and be like, "I got to be on Boss Talk." Like what? And we it's haven't been doing it very long. Thank you, man. It's an amazing platform that gathers attention, the right attention. Like wow. every time I see your uh, post, all right, I look at it like, ah, oh, shit. I like the way he's speaking. Ah, uh, <laughs> shit. You know, I literally I mean, listen, if you Thank if you, you literally look at dictation and, and, and literally look at tone and watch the way people say, ah, man, God damn it, why you say that? <laughs> you know, like, I literally be just studying. Thank you, man. man. So I'm like, hey, this is a cool thing to come on to. Man. And literally just be here. And, like, I was waiting. I can't even lie. I wanted you to come. When <laughs> I talked to you, when Sean came on here, I, I started, he just, he mentioned you. Man, what Sean say, man? Sean, God damn, I need to go see what he say, man. <laughs> shit, because it's a brain fuck me right now. It made me want to, you going to go look for that interview. That's like a motherfucker, man. Shit, what he say? It made me, 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 me want to meet you. What he say, Sean? No, no, you going to find it. You going to find it. But he just, he he showed that he, he was a person that he cared about, and, 
since he cared about you in that way, and and he's an entrepreneur, I'm an entrepreneur. We all, it's like, man, I need to meet this guy. He must I, be doing something right, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and that's that's what it, it, it kind of started at for me. Nah, me and Sean can't follow. I know his mama, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, for real, his mama's so sweet. That's what he said. Like, he talked about you yeah, did. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, his, his, his mama's his so mom sweet. Teeth up. It's like one of the things. Like, nah, man, you can't hate a person when you can literally see him in his mom. Wow. So it's like, nah, man, hell no, nah, I love that nigga. Man, that's dope. Shit. What's up, Sean? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, like, man. Talk, baby. Hey, yeah, man. man. Scott. So you already he gave his website mm-hmm. out. He he gave his store location out. Well, he didn't get a store location. location. He didn't get a location Not out, joking. but he gave how you can get to him. So man, thank you for coming on Boss Talk. We love you. You know man. what fucked up, man? We love you, brother. Man, he asked me to rap. Fuck. You know what? Fuck! No, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with no, you. Go, I no, was no, thinking no. about it because nah, you know nah, the nah. reason why I was thinking about it because he's like, oh yeah, I freestyle all the time. Oh, like, she hard on that. That's why I like, be what? like, don't do it. You should drop you a beat, in but I was career. That. Don't do what? it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> now the thing is, I love freestyling and shit. Freestyle it's one something about boss talk. Please don't forget the money, like, man. Ah, uh, Rose. Rose, yeah. Boss talk, CEO, hey, in the door. Who this is, Dr. Rose? Yeah, he bout to flow. Go talk, Rose talk. Don't they see that guy walk? Graduated from the dope. 106, now fucking poke. How'd you hear them private folks? Yeah, them private thoughts. Yeah, yeah. He bought them demons. He know what say, cause he always he see. Yeah, yeah. Talk what he do. <laughs> man, hold up, man. That boy had to get it in. Dr. Just... Rose in the building, man. It was... it go down just like that, man. You know Holler at yeah. your boy, it's a unique hustle. Oh, I know. It's... Yeah, if I would took some liquor, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, it's been another great I, I, segment I, of Boss Talk 101. Uh, I don't do it. I thought it was gone. Oh, yeah. Shit.